So it was a dollar rescue plant. It was so small for the longest time. I've had it for at least six months, I'd say. And I kind of just left it. This is one of the only pots I have planted directly in the Ray Dunn pots. I, I find these pots stay too wet, but I had it in there and I didn't want to take it out. So I just left it and it's finally taken off. So I have that. What else is back here? This is another of the Monstera Sepulcana and also Neon Philodendron, Lemon Lime Philodendron. So just have that in there. The Philodendron cuttings have some, have some roots already. So I have that. I'm trying to see what's the easiest way. So let's do this big guy right here. This is a Philodendron Xanadu. And I knew what this was right away. And he's doing some weird curvy thing. <laughs> so I think it may be some water. But I got this at Whole Foods. I've had it for two months, maybe. Um, it has definitely grown a lot. You can see all the new growth in here. It was a nice size when I got it. The leaves are also getting um, getting bigger, a lot bigger. So I really like this one. This one's cool. Um, what do I have over here? These are our little experiments. Um, they're sprouting. This one has one little sprout. You can see that. And these have a bunch. Now the verdict is out, which is which, but one of them is grapefruit seeds and one is green bell pepper seeds. So depending on who you ask, because I did, I did those with my kids and I caught myself marking them and I forgot which one I was marking with the little colorful piece of tape. So it's one or the other. This is the philodendron bipinifolium, I, I believe. This is a cutting. Um, this was in that batch that I bought locally. And so it's just sitting there. She did let me know it will probably take a while to root, but that's fine by me. So that just sits there in that container. And then right here, I have some Tradescantia, the variegated ones, just some cuttings of that. I got that plant from her as well. It's a really huge one. I'll show that one when I do the tour of the kitchen plants. Um, but I decided to take some cuttings and just see what they do in different lighting conditions. I'm not the biggest fan of Trader Scantia, but I mean, I don't know. I just, I took it anyway as a part of the plants that she was selling. So, all right, down to this shelf here. We'll start on this side. This is the Peperomia Rossi. And I don't know, I've been back and forth with this plant. It was one of the ones when I first started into plants that I saw that everybody had. I thought it was really cool. So when I saw it in the store, it was kind of like an impulse buy. And when I got home, I was like, eh, I don't think I like it that much. Um, it was droopy for a while, but I think I've hit the sweet spot of how to care for it, which is to basically kind of leave it alone, um, let it soak up the light right here. And then when I'm doing my rounds for watering, I give it, um, you know, I'll soak it through like right now. It's pretty light, so it's gonna be coming up time to water it. And yeah, that's pretty much it on that. Um, it's doing well, so I'm gonna keep it for now. And back here, this is my Monstera Addisonii. And this one has some um, shock from shipping. I got this from Hertz. And I know it's the shipping process because this is the second time I purchased this plant from a different seller um, at a whole different time of year. And so I know it's the shipping on the plant because it came the exact same way. So you can see it has some yellowing on this leaf right here, but for the most part, it has perked back up. So I'm just gonna leave it and see what happens. Um, I decided I wasn't gonna remove any leaves. Um, I was just gonna let them fall off, you know, when and if they want it. But I really love the fenestrations on this one. It looks totally different from the other one that I had, which is cool. Um, these holes are a lot bigger, which is really cool. And I can pretend that I have it. Um, I can pretend I have an obliqua. If you're into plants, then you'll know. If you're into like philodendrons, like rare philodendrons, you'll know what I'm talking about. But it's a real expensive plant. It's like thousands of dollars, which I'll never own. So I'll pretend with that one. So moving over, this is my fairy tale cactus right here. This I got 
six months or so ago from Home Depot. I was very excited to find find it. I have been looking for it for like a year. I have been seeing it on Instagram and I just thought it was really cool. And finally, I um, popped into Home Depot about six months ago and they had one, so I had to get it. And this is the only one that's in like this rounded terracotta and I really love the combination. It's really cool. This is another one. Of course, it's a cactus, so it likes to be left alone anyway. I've just recently started to see some changes, like growth across here. But for the most part, um, it just sits there and looks cute. This one right here. These are my, um, this is my neon. Why do I keep saying neon? I don't know if it's called neon or lemon lime, but it's the philodendron. And I wanted one of these for a super long time but this is when you know everything wasn't on lockdown and all that and i was trying to hold out to find one in the big box stores but i didn't so i ended up buying this one from plant arena and i'm happy that i did because it came super healthy and full and it's um it's been growing really well i water it when i'm coming around to water everything else it's not one of those plants like the calatheas or the marantas where i check it super often to make sure it's staying wet or moist but uh, it does really well. I know I've heard some people say that they have a hard time with um, with this version of the um, of the philodendron, but so far it's doing well. So, mm -hmm. what do we have? Oh, this one right here, um, which looks like it needs some. I need the water. <laughs> this one is. Um, a mix of cuttings that I took from um, Marble Queen Pothos. I bought a really long vine of it. Someone who I follow on Instagram, she was trimming her plants and she was in the stores like, you know, if anybody wants it, you know. And so I contacted her like, you know, I want it. So she gave it to me. Uh, I paid for the shipping or whatever and she sent it to me. It was like three feet long. It was really long. So I cut it up between this pot and this pot. But in this one, I also mixed in some, <clears throat> excuse me, some neon pothos that I had. Um, so this is a mix of Marble Queen and neon pothos. I need to figure out what those are actually literally called. Is it lemon lime or is it neon? Let me know in the comments. I know one is pothos and one is a philodendron. Like this is for sure a philodendron, but is it called a lemon lime philodendron? Or is it called um, the Neon Philodendron? And then there's the um, Neon Pothos. So that's what those two are back there. This lovely right here, as you can see, is my full, full pot of String of Turtles. This pot was very full when I got it, like as far as all this cover. But if you come closely, you can see all those stand-up pieces and then it's starting to um, get longer. I did propagate a bunch of this. <clears throat> if I hadn't cut it, it would definitely be like down here lengthwise, but I did cut some. And this is another one. You just leave it alone. Um, I've been bottom watering it when it needs. But other than that, pretty, pretty easy going plant. And then this here, which I was also excited to get because the variegation on it is just really pretty I had some um flowers on it when i first got it. i think there's like one left right there and i was over watering this in the beginning because everything i saw people were like oh just leave it make sure it's just always in water it's always in water so this is a cash pot and it's not draining so i was just pouring water down in there and then you know when it would drink it up i would pour more and i think for this it was just too much at least in my conditions and so the lead those um flowers started to brown and then they ended up falling off i removed two of them and the other one fell off so i pulled back on the water but i do keep this on the wet side and it's happy and um yeah so that's just what i do with that one but like i said it's really pretty i like all of that detail and the color i got that one from plants arena as well there are two other kind that i want to get um but the one is it's sold out in the option that i want to get and so i'm waiting excuse me i'm waiting to get the two other ones i want to get them together 
this is a Marble Queen Pothos. That's what I was told. But it kind of looks different from the other Marble Queen I have. So I don't know. Um, let me know in the comments if you think this is a different variety. Or let me know if you think that this one is a different variety. Because my understanding was that this was the Marble Queen. So I don't know. But it's nice nonetheless. This one started off with two. It had this um, leaf that's resting on my hand. And it had one other smaller leaf. For the longest time, that's all it was. It did not grow. And now finally it has started to take off. You can see it has another leaf coming in down there. It's going to vine. And then it has um, those two new leaves. So I'm happy that that one has perked up and started growing. Fix the camera. And what else do we have on that shelf? Um, let me move this. This back here, that's a little ponytail palm I have left. I had um, a bigger pot that had like four bunches in it, and I separated them. And this is the last surviving one. It was in the bathroom, and then I brought it out here, and it really likes this spot, so I'm just going to leave it there. And that one, I forget to water. So that's how often it does not need to be watered. Um, pretty easy going plant this right here you can see with the little yellow plant on it I'm experiment a yellow leaf rather I'm experimenting with Leca and this is a cutting I took from my um, larger Monstera Monstera deliciosa and so that's um, in there I was gonna remove the yellow leaf but I just want to let it go and do what it's gonna do so when I actually do my Leca update video I can you know show you exactly what it looks like without having like you know clipped off any leaves or anything like that so i think that's all part of it um acclimating to the leka it had a root this was a rooted piece so it already had a root on it when i removed it from the main plant and um when i put it in the leka and i pulled it out the other day because like i said i was going to remove that leaf but i decided not to i can already see small roots starting to grow off that main root that was there so i guess that means it's doing pretty well in the leka but we'll see put that back this domino is so pretty oh it's a new leaf right here unfurling so that's everything on that show and then lastly down here we have <clears throat> this is a kangaroo paw fern and this is so cool you can see the rhizomes um i think that's what they're called they're just, they're creepy looking, but they're cool. Like, I really love the look of that one. And you can see that this guy right here put out a new leaf. This one I've also had for about <clears throat> around the six months, maybe a little less, three to six. I got that with that Philodendron Xanadu. Um, these I got that same night. I just popped into Whole Foods because I had heard, um, you know, that they were... Uh, getting in some nice plants because at least the one in my area originally they didn't have plants and so I popped in just to see what they had and they had this guy right here and the Zamdu so I grabbed up both of those and that one is in this cool Ray Dunn planter that looks like a big mug and that's one of my favorite Ray Dunn's right there but I think I'll have I'll do like a Ray Dunn video like a Ray Dunn plant video to show all my Ray Dunn items that I use for my plants this right here is a little mix of different types of snake plants that I put together. Um, it's the bird's nest one, a Laurinetti, I think it's called. And then I think that's one of the Hanai ones, I think. But I just wanted to put together um, a pot that had a bunch of different snake plants in it. And we all know that <clears throat> the snake plants are super low maintenance. So that just sits down there. Now, again, like with the top layer of this shelf that I showed you, this is the lower level, and you can see right there that that's wall behind there. The window stops up here. So these are lower light requirement plants that I have down here. This is another. Now, I thought it was a fairy castle cactus, but I think it's a different type because it looks totally different from this one here. Um, my husband actually got me this one. He thought it was something different that I didn't have. Then when he got home with it, we thought, oh, it's the same thing. But I don't know. Let me know in the comments what do you think because I think it's different. But this one sits down here. This one is growing uh, well. 
all of these parts right here you can see right there so this one is growing more so than the other one then over here i just have some little propagation experiments this container and these are um if we get takeout or whatever um i've had these for a super long time too i always keep the container when it's like a nice lid in the bottom and so these are like little greenhouses basically so these are the um pieces of the chinese evergreen and i'm trying to root those up that one back there has some string of turtles and also um the hoya hoya curtsii which i forgot to show you that i have that up here <clears throat> and um these are the main cuttings i wanted to try some rooting some in water and also some down here in the spangle moss and then that little ziploc bag over there has the bulbs whatever you call them like the rhizomes for when i was repotting my alocasia they had some down there and i had watched a video before where the girl said um that you could bury those bury them <laughs> you could plant those and they should put you up some new plants so we'll see it hasn't really hasn't sprouted i haven't checked it in a while but i'll just leave it in there in that ziploc bag <clears throat> so that's everything that's on the shelf i'll show you these because my daughter has her blanket on the couch i'll show you these because they're right here by the shelf this is the philodendron selum i know they have changed the name um i guess it's not categorized as a philodendron anymore but that's what i know it as philodendron selum philodendron hope this is my second go around with this plant and it's finally in a good place i feel um it had some damage when I got it. And so <clears throat> instead of holding on to damaged leaves, I just got rid of all the damaged leaves and I put a water spike in it. You can see it has the um, wine bottle to water it. And it seems to now like this setup, it has settled in and now it's growing. So I'm happy about that because I had said in another video, this is gonna be, well, on my Instagram, this is gonna be my last attempt at this plant because it was not looking well in the beginning. And the previous one I had did really well for a long time and then it just declined down to nothing. So, and that, that's another one I think is an example of moving it because the only thing that I can, that I did was move it somewhere different and um, that had less light and it just did not, it didn't like the move. These get very big though. <clears throat> so if you end up getting one and this split leaf philodendron is what my dad calls it. He has one too. And his has like six foot long aerial roots. It's crazy, but these get really big. And then here, of course, you know, this is my Monstera as uh, Monstera Deliciosa, which has a kooky looking leaf right here. I might take that off, but it's been doing well. It needs to be repotted because it has the roots coming out the bottom, but um, just like everybody else, I can't get out. So I don't have a way to get to get any bigger pots right now so i'm just gonna leave it for the time being it's still happy and putting out new leaves so i think it's still fine and wrapping up here this is my philodendron mykins oops excuse my feet <laughs> this is my philodendron mykins and i have it some of them of it i have trailing and then the rest i have coming up on this pole here this wooden plank and i have noticed that the leaves that are climbing that have attached are bigger so it is true what they say when you let them climb like they would in nature versus trail you do get bigger leaves because you can see this one too i did not have leaves big like this until <clears throat> oh and this one's really big i didn't have leaves this big until it started to climb and this is in another one of my cool Right down pots. And then over here, and this is gonna be the last for this video, which is already very long. Um, this is my bird of paradise. It's a white bird of paradise. Cool little story behind it. It has a new leaf coming in. Um, <clears throat> I wanted one of these for the longest time. Every time I would find them, it either wasn't in my budget or I would always like just miss them. And one night I was in the grocery store about two months ago and I just ran in to get like 
whatever random thing and it was a little plant section in there so i went to look and i saw it tucked away it was like in the back but i saw the leaf stick it out so i knew what it was right away so i was happy to have it and then funny enough right after i got that literally the next day i was in wegmans and they had these really they had a whole bunch of these really big ones but i already had one so i didn't get another one i like to have one of a plant there are some plants where i have multiples but very few and it's more so multiples only because of me propagating versus buying the same plant more than once when i already have it and this is the alocasia ivory coast it's hanging in there um it was a rescue plant also from lowe's um it has put out a bunch of new growth i lost a couple pieces of it and i think i finally got the watering where it needs to be for this guy for it to be happy because the one piece that did end up coming off it was actually like it just came right off the part that had rotted so what's left down there the stem is nice and firm and it sits right here and gets a good amount of light and it's pretty happy um ain't really nothing over here to show but i guess i'll show you it real quick this is the Echeveria black prince it lost a lot of leaves down here but it's continued to grow this really long spike and i don't know how long i should let it go before i trim down the spike because i think that's where all the energy is going it actually flowered up here too <clears throat> because as you can see down here it's just not really doing the best and these are the leaves i just took off of the hoya this is a alocasia um poly bulb that i'm trying to get i don't even have the lights on right now i'm trying to get it to grow back but so far nothing but we'll see we have some succulents here that's the watch chain it's a crash or something but i know it's the watch chain one same here and then this poor little pitiful guy this was the buddhist temple that i was so excited to get but as you can see, I have not mastered his care. And everything I look up, everybody says it's really hard to care for. Um, so it's just there. We'll see what happens. But I was excited to have it. So hopefully it will bounce back. All right. That is it for this part. Hope it wasn't too, too long for you guys. But this is this side of the room. And in the next parts, I'll do the other side of the room. I'll do um, my kitchen and then I'll actually do my bathroom as well because I've gotten a nice selection of plants set up in there too. All right. Thanks for watching everybody. See you next time. Bye.